everyone, and um, welcome. From our perspective, we see our heroes, our pop stars, through the lens of their work, their product, their music, their videos, their image, their interviews, and also opinion about them. And how I see someone would be very different to how you see someone. Maybe there'd be some similarities. For me, what's interesting about our guest today, Melanie C., is how I saw you when you first came on the scene many years ago was almost like a friend. As the females that I knew, as someone a bit tough, um, someone who definitely had her feet firmly on the ground. The one in the band that had the talent, I don't, I'm not putting the others down, but the one in the band that had the voice. And um, yeah, I think also there was a, a, a quality about you which was the one that didn't really want to garner the most attention. You were the sort of the one that was a little bit uh, in the background. Now, what I find interesting is that there has been a search for identity and a sort of marriage of, of your identities, which you've been going through, mm -hmm. which really permeate, uh, permeates in your music yeah. today. And I want to come to those identities in a minute, but I just want to read out how you've described yourself is yeah. you've embraced all your identities as sporty, as a mum, a girlfriend, a cleaner, a cook, <laughs> and a therapist. <laughs> so I want to get onto that in a minute. But you're here in Hamburg and you're um, a part of the jury of the Anchor Award, which yeah. means that you're seeing all these bands and artists. How do you go about judging another artist when you're an artist? Because I would imagine that's really quite difficult, if not painful. I find it really difficult, actually. I, I almost have to not be an artist, you know, and just look at it as a music lover and not as, not even judge, you know, just kind of go on, you know, how it makes me feel, you know, what impresses me. You do have to critique, you know, we have to find a winner at the end of the day. And we had our first deliberation last night and we were just so gushing about the two acts that we'd seen. And it's like, come on, guys, we've got to get, we're going to have to get down to the nitty gritty. We see lots more artists today. Um, so, yeah, so it's tough, but I, I think it's always to be done with kindness as an artist because you know what it's like. You know, you have empathy for these people and they're remarkable to be nominated for this award means that they are, I mean, the, the standard's incredible. I mean, it's funny, isn't it? Because you, you, I mean, you're, the judgment of you at the point of entry into the Spice Girls was very different. Um, it, was a, it was a casting. Um, did you take anything from that which may have been a, a weird experience back then. Did you take anything of that and say, "Oh God, I don't want to. I don't want to be like the people that judge me back then. I want to do something different." Oh wow! I, you know, I grew up performing. I've, it was always my passion, and I did a lot of dancing as a kid. And I always wanted to work in music, but I knew it was an incredibly difficult industry to get into. So I went to performing arts college. I thought, in my youth, I thought, well, that seems like a sensible option, not realising that actually working in, in musical theatre was what I was hoping to do, is incredibly difficult in itself. So going through that process, there's a lot of rejection and auditioning is, is a necessary evil. So I was, you know, I was quite used, I suppose, to being judged. But I don't think that us humans are very good at it. You know, I think we, we have feelings about, you know, anyone who criticises us, even if we believe we have a tough exterior and, you know, and, and we build this shell to protect ourselves. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think it takes many, many years, actually, before you begin to care less about other people's opinions. Um, but something I'm experiencing more recently with young people is that, you know, and maybe I was the same, you seem to have this real sense of self, you know. So I, I think a lot of the, the younger artists that I have come into contact with seem very self-assured. And I think that's really important in this industry. Were you not self-assured? At that point? Do you know what? I think I was. But I think what happened to myself and the Spice Girls was so extraordinary that nothing can prepare you for that. And it really like just rocked me to the to the point of it being difficult to deal with. And it took me a long time to kind of kind of find myself again within it all. I want to get onto this idea of identities because I find that um, a really fascinating 
subject. When did that become important for you? What was the moment where you sort of questioned all your different identities, as it were? I think it first started, obviously, being part of the Spice Girls. will be how most people who've ever heard of me will recognise and remember me. Of course, you know, the Spice Girls was and is huge. You know, it's global. It was a phenomenon. You know, it was a wonderful thing to be a part of. But sometimes when that's how people recognise you, you can feel like that's the only thing people think you are. And of course you're not, because we are all so many things. So when I went out and did my first solo record, Northern Star, in 1999... I think I felt quite rebellious. I was frustrated. I wanted people to realise there's more to me than Sporty Spice. You know, that is part of me, but I also have this to offer and I can do this and I'm capable of all these other things. So I think with that in mind, you know, you can never change people's opinion of you. But with that in mind, I think I I kind of lost myself a little bit because I was trying to find this thing that I wanted to be. And it wasn't until I was back on stage with the Spice Girls last year, we did a stadium tour of the UK and Ireland, and it gave me this amazing opportunity to become Sporty Spice again. But I realised I don't become her, I am her, you know, it's within me. And it just made me feel really reflective and think about all of these aspects of my life, my personality, my career. And I just thought, you know what's really important in life is to really embrace yourself to embrace all of those things because if you don't nobody else can but know? these monikers that you you were actually given them weren't you from a journalist you weren't yeah. actually they, they weren't the initial so so to speak the initial um part of the spice girls they were given by a journalist do you think that when you in essence change your name because you know you became sporty at that point mm-hmm. do you think what happens is that then you live up to that name so for example you know you have Boy George, who was a bit of a China doll and 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 remained sort of youthful because of of, of the moniker Lady Gaga, mm. you know. Then you're getting sort is she of a lady? is she a bit mad? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's sort of that thing. And then you know, it's uh, and if you're given the name Sporty, then it's almost like, do you have to live up to that? Mm. And do you think that's part of it? It's not just how people saw you. Yeah. It's like how you then perceive yourself for a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really weird one with the Spice Girls because everything that we are and became was almost accidental. You know, we started out really ambitious girls. We wanted to make music. We wanted to travel. We wanted to be famous. And girl power really was born because we experienced sexism within the industry really early on. And you know, I, I don't want to, it wasn't outrageous, but it was business. You know, it was like, girl bands don't sell records, you know, or they'll never sell as many as a boy band because girls buy records and they want to buy records by boys. You're not going to get on the front of this magazine because we need to put boy bands on the front because that will sell us more copies. So that, for the Spice Girls, was a red rag, like, to the bull. So that was where we started talking about girl power, but it gave us something to to shout about, you know. It gave us a little bit of a mission. And it kind of became our ethos. And then we quite quickly realized that we had, um, you know, a huge following, you know, gay men we had a huge following with as well. So then we thought we can't be screaming about girl power when we've got all these, you know, young guys following and supporting us as well. So we started talking about equality. And then, you know, it's so weird how it all became because... We originally all wore similar outfits. We looked at girl bands before us, you know, and historically people had been dressed the same or at least coordinated. And for us, someone always looked stupid. You know, if we were in something quite casual, Victoria was uncomfortable. If we were in, you know, smart little dresses, I felt silly. So one day we were at rehearsals all kind of wearing what we all wear. And we were like, why don't we just do this? Why don't we just wear our own thing? And it was very chaotic, but we are chaos. And it just all became this thing. We were given these nicknames. I am really athletic. I wore sportswear. You know, it's yeah. kind of weird. But we did become caricatures of those nicknames. Well, the funny thing is, being back with the girls last year, we are we are these these things, these, you know, these caricatures. There's no getting away from it. We were working. We had a wonderful ensemble of dancers and they would laugh at us because we literally 
live up to <laughs> to these you know stereotypes almost it just is who we are um so that's kind of confusing in itself because i think i was trying to escape who I really was, you know? So that was where the, all this confusion came in. So this was a sort of process of acceptance, really. But you talk about, at the time of your first solo album, did, did that trigger um, a depression? Because I know that you've, you've been through a depression. So did that trigger the depression? Or was that through something else at that time? I think? think these things are complex, you know? And I, I've, I've always felt it was circumstantial because of what had happened to me. Um, you know, as a kid, I've, I'd always been a very positive person. Um, it hadn't been anything I'd suffered with up until this point. And, you know, my life felt completely out of control. And, you know, I suffered with an eating disorder as well. And I think with many people, that is a, it's a form of control. It's one of the only things you can control when your life is in such a chaotic state. Um, yeah, I think dealing with the things you deal with being thrust into the public eye on that level, nothing can prepare you for that. You know, reading about yourself in the media, everybody's opinion on you being photographed, being criticised, not only the way that you look, your personality, what you say, what you don't say, how you, your talent, all of these things. And it's, it's a lot to take on board as a young person. And I think I'm also a very sensitive person, as many artists are, you know. So I just think it was the pressure I put myself under, the pressure us girls put each other under. Um, it, I think it was just all of those things rolled into one. An unsustainable lifestyle. You're traveling constantly. I wasn't nourishing myself properly. I was obsessively exercising. And, and one day my body just took over my mind and said, this has to stop. And that was when I was diagnosed with depression in 2000. Do you think fame is like a sort of mirror to yourself where you're, you know, when you, I'm saying you, <laughs> when someone gets when up in one. the morning, when one gets up in the morning and looks in the mirror, you find a spot on your face, don't you? And you concentrate on the spot rather than anything else. And that's, then it becomes a sort of obsession. Oh my God, I am a spot sort of thing. And for me, I just have the feeling that fame, especially on the level that you had fame, provided this sort of negative mirror because you're involved in reading these articles you're involved you're actually taking on board other people's opinions yeah. is that the mirror or what were there actual people around you who could ground you and say you know hey Melanie it's not really like that I think for us going through that situation we had each other that was experiencing the same thing but it was new to us and it was new to everyone around us so we had this incredible support network of our friends and our family people who'd known us forever but they don't really know how to deal with it either, you know? And I, I feel really strongly about young artists. And I feel like it is the responsibility of labels, of management, to protect and take care of young artists. When in the 90s, I never had any emotional support, psychological support. And I think it's important because I think you see a lot of victims of this. And a lot of people suffer, sometimes unnecessarily. Yeah. Do you think that coloured the view of, of the Spice Girls at that period? Did you sort of fall out of love with the idea of the Spice Girls for a while? Do you know what I mean? I know you'd gone solo, yeah. so in a, a essence you'd broken, a, uh, broken away. But did you also fall out of love with what you'd, have, what you'd achieved? Do you know what I mean? Because I think there is a part where you fall out of love and then you come back and go, you know what, actually I did do something great back then. Do you know what I think I've done? over the years, I've kind of dwelled on the negative, which is hard because it's hard not to, because you do so many interviews and people often want to talk about the negatives. And what was wonderful about last year was it gave us an opportunity to celebrate the wonderful things that happened because it was amazing. It was incredible. The good stuff, I feel I can say that now because I'm over it, outweighs the bad stuff you know you can never take that away my absolute childhood fantasies were realized and continue to be what, because what were that. they then what were those childhood fantasies were they meeting people like mandela were they um being famous and and, and a center of attention were they being you know a singer in the most famous pop group in the world at that period it was all about me yeah i think you know as a kid when you aspire to be famous and to be a performer it really is a very selfish 
wish, you know, I didn't think about other people. I didn't think about being in a band. I wanted to be the next Madonna. You know, that was that was in my head, um, my dream. But, you know, unbeknownst to me, I was going to be part of the biggest girl band in the world at that time, um, maybe of all time. But, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll have that. But, you know, I think alongside this whole mirror thing and, and dealing with, you know, someone said to me once, you know, people's opinion of you are none of your business, which I think is really good advice because it's so true, isn't it? I don't like everyone. I can't expect everyone to like me. Um, but along with that, I also felt you, you spoke in the introduction in the beginning about, you know, me seeming to be somebody with my feet on the ground, which I am. And I think a lot of it is for my upbringing and working class from the north and which, you know, for people who aren't, aren't British, that's kind of like a, a bit of a stereotype, isn't it? But, you know, it's kind of the environment I've been brought up in. And coming from that environment and becoming very successful, um, you know, both with my work and financially, I felt a lot of guilt. You know, I felt like I didn't deserve it. And I felt like I had to make myself this what I perceived to be perfect this perfect image of who I was to be deserving of this success so it's psychologically it's very complicated I think but I've definitely had a long time to unpick it all <laughs> the um the album your new music as I said before is sort of permeated by this search for identity can can you tell me how you see that or do you see that as your drive now? Because I think every artist has a specific drive. And I can, I'll can just give a quick example. It's sort of like Madonna and the, the connection to her mother who died when she was young. Mm -hmm. And then when her mother went, it was clear um, that she needed attention. And so that has been a drive in her life, yeah. I would say. Yeah. And, um, and I think for you, talking about identity, there is a drive in there to find these identities and to marry these identities and to bring it out in your music. So how has that worked in this new album? Oh, it, it's all very complex. I mean, I always question people who want to be famous because I have, you know, an interesting relationship with fame. I think once it happened to me, I was like, oh, I'm not sure whether I like this. Um, you know, the attention and the lack of privacy sat quite uncomfortably with me, which is something I didn't kind of bargain for. So, um, yeah, I've kind of questioned that. And I, I think like lots of people who, who come from, you know, divorced parents, I was searching for my place in the world. I am the only child of my mum and dad. I have half siblings and step siblings, but I kind of sometimes felt like I didn't belong, you know, that maybe I was a bit of a burden. So it was almost like I had to find my place in the world. And I think that's partly why I have such a special relationship with the LGBTQ plus community as well. I had an incredible time last year touring prides all over the world with Sync the Pink, who is a creative collective. And, you know, working with drag queens and non-binary people and kind of really owning being a gay icon in a way I hadn't before because I thought I always thought it, it, that I'm not responsible for that. It's the other Spice Girls. You know, I'm just sporty. I think always it was like, oh, no, I'm sporty. It's nothing to do with me. Uh, but it just gave me this this feeling of acceptance. And, and, and I think that's where the Spice Girls and the LGBTQ plus community have this kinship. You know, it's really about truly being who you are and that being who you absolutely should be, you know. So what did you learn from these drag queens then? And what did they learn from you, more importantly? Gosh, what did they learn from me? I, you know, I would have to ask them what they learned from me. But well, what they learned from me was, I suppose, the experiences that I've had. We were going into some crazy experiences. We, our first gig was Sao Paulo Pride in Brazil. And there was over three million people on the street. I mean, you, you can't even imagine, can you? We were on a float and we, we had our, our show that we'd put together. And, and I know from experience, these really incredibly adrenaline heightened performances are ever like that. And you come off stage and you're like, 
what just happened. You can't even remember anything. So I said to my, to my beautiful drag queens, I said, look, you know, this is going to happen. It's going to go so quickly. You must be present. Take in the sights, the sounds, the smells. Make eye contact with each other. Really, like, take these, these like, pictures in your mind for memory. And, um, and they, they, when we came off, they were like, oh, my God, you were so right. You know, so that was just a little, a little anecdote of, of something which they, hopefully they did learn from me. But um, from them, I just learned, I don't know, I think it's hearing about people's, you know, people's struggle sometimes. You know, just that kind of coming from different backgrounds, and different cultures and just wanting to be who you are and how difficult that can be, you know, whether it's coming out or just the things that people have to overcome and, and it just I don't know it just it just made me feel like really grateful I think we all have so much to deal with in our lives and just meeting people from this community I don't know it just kind of opened my eyes and just made me feel grateful it's funny isn't it because you talk about the, the the Spice Girls time about female empowerment and it's what you've been since as well and then also about empowerment for LGBTQ people and at the same time, you have the feeling that you were not empowered yourself back then. Yeah. So there's this sort of, you know, you're like doing stuff for other people, but in essence have ignored yeah. your own yeah, needs. Yeah, your own needs, absolutely. And then I felt guilty for that. You know, I felt guilty because I thought I'm not, I'm not practicing what I preach, you know. Yeah. But it's, it's just been a journey. And I think, you know, to come back, you were talking about this record you know, the, the last few years, it's been a gradual process and the last few years have been amazing for me to have this final, you know, whatever this piece, this jigsaw piece, this last little piece that had to fall into place, whether it was a combination of working with the Spice Girls again last year, revisiting that, working with, you know, very closely with the LGBTQ plus community and I feel like my priorities as an artist have changed when I was a kid, it was about all about me. It was about being famous. It was about performing. It was about the enjoyment that I got about the performance. Over the years, I've had the most wonderful experiences where fans reach out to you. It used to be fan mail. Now it's Twitter and, you know, other platforms. And you hear all those wonderful stories about how my music, the Spice Girls music, has helped people. It's empowered people. It's got them through difficult moments. It's been their strength. And it's like, wow, that's what music did for me. When I was a teenager in my room with my first heartbreak, falling out with my mates, all of those moments when you feel very alone. And I thought, wow, I've, I've been given this incredible honor of doing that for other people. And it's really humbling. And so now when I make music, it's, of course, it's about me, but it's really about that connection with people. And I, I just feel really, really lucky, you know, especially with what the Spice Girls have done. You know, I think the legacy of the Spice Girls is incredible. And yeah, I just feel lucky that I've been given the opportunity to do that. I mean, when I listen to your new music, I mean, there's some real thumping tracks and it's, and I have the feeling, and it's a little bit, I'm going to compare this to Madonna, who was your childhood hero, but... Madonna has a problem. When she releases music, she has such an enormous legacy. It doesn't matter how good the current music is. It's almost like you cannot overcome that legacy. Yeah. When I listen to your music, I think this should be massive. And maybe the legacy has given you a platform, but at the same time slightly works against you. Do you think that's fair? To say that, because I think your music, if it was recorded by a younger artist today, a sort of, you know, who's starting out on their career, I think it would be massively successful. And I think it's only because of the legacy that people have an image, maybe, and connect you to the 90s as well as to today, that it works against you. I don't know if that's fair or not. Really. Yeah, I, I think there's definitely something in that. I think, yeah, because people already have this opinion written, don't they, for you. And... I think we, it's very ageist as well. You know, I'm, I'm making music which is quite youthful, but it's music that I enjoy, you know, and I'm the age You're I'm still at. a spring chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. Obviously, I, I, I talk about girl power and equality, you know, as all of the Spice Girls do, but I think it's really important now. I do see a little bit of a shift in entertainment, you know, in definitely in the UK, and I, I don't know what it's like here in Germany, but, you know, women of a certain age 
until quite recently were bumped off the telly. You know, there, there wasn't great roles for women in movies, which is changing. But I think, you know, music is a difficult one. And the thing which is, I think is hilarious is, you know, obviously I'm a Spice Girl, so people are interested in speaking to me, but then there's a little bit of prejudice when it comes to my music sometimes. And it's quite hard to get played on certain radio networks because of my age. But my old lady face isn't offending anybody on the radio. So what's that about? You know, I don't sound old. I just look it. Just wait another it 20 years. It doesn't make years. any sense to me. You know, they'll have me worse. on the telly. But, so going on that message, this female empowerment message, and not just about age, but it's interesting because the Reaper Barn Festival has this program called Key Change. Mm. And the idea, idea behind it is to convince other festivals to have a sort of 50-50 platform. Yeah. So 50% female or female identified artists yeah. um, to men. Um, and it, that is one program. In the 90s, female empowerment of the Spice Girls, we're sort of 25 years on. Yeah. It hasn't really happened, has it? It's, a, it's, a, it's sort of, what is it going to take really, yeah. for there to be true equality. Oh, my gosh. Well, I think it's, I mean, is it ever going to be truly equal? You know, we've been lagging behind for centuries, haven't we? But I, I think the important thing is that we, that we keep trying, you know, and I, I have seen, definitely seen improvements, but it does feel like it's not as, you know, changing as quickly as it should be. Um, but, yeah, we just have to keep pushing, really. I mean, for artists you know, obviously at different levels. I mean, some of the, the most powerful artists in the world, you know, over the last 20 years have been women. You know, when you look at Beyonce and Lady Gaga and Rihanna, of course, there's been guys out there as well. So I, I don't think there's an imbalance in that world. You know, I think the possibilities are there. But I think when you look at, you know, studios, labels, if you're looking at... Um, you know, even musicians, you know, it's, it's hard. I think lots of females, you know, put female bands together, but it's quite hard to find those musicians. It's not like there's, there seems to be so many more men available. Um, so, yeah, so it's just like baby steps, isn't it? Before we started the chat today, we talked downstairs, and I hope this is all right to sort of mention this, and you can ignore it if you want. But I told you about my mother and when she passed and what she said to me on her deathbed and how that has stayed with me and been such an important facet to my life. And you mentioned also something. Would you be willing to share that? Yeah. Well, yeah, I was, it just made me um, think of my, my nan who passed away a few years ago um, on my paternal side. And she, she was quite straight talking actually, my nan. And one of the last things she said to me was, you're too soft, you girl. She was from Liverpool. And, you know, it, it's very true. And it's something that stays with me because I think in my youth, especially well, even in my adulthood, I've kind of allowed myself to be treated sometimes in a way that isn't right. You know, I've kind of stayed quiet and I've wanted to keep the peace. And I think there's a, a long, actually, yes, she's been influential in this album, I suppose, because it's time for me to speak up, you know. And there's a, a lyric in Who I Am, which is the lead track from the album. And um, it's like they, they don't, they don't recognise when I'm being honest, because I wasn't before. And, and I think, you know, that really comes from, because I never used to speak up. Now when I do speak up, it confuses people. They're just like, oh, well, you know, well, she's piping up. What's she piping up for? What's wrong with her? <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, I've always felt this way. I just didn't have the confidence to say it. Do you think she knew exactly what you needed in life to sort of <laughs> stand up and, and uh, be powerful and be who you really are? Yeah, I think she did. Well, I must say, I love the new music and I wish you so much success with Melanie C, the album. And uh, thank you for being here today. Thank, thank you. Lovely to meet you.